These are students from the Forensic Anthropology Program, and today we're doing field methods, locating clandestine burials. So we'll go from about that tree to this big tree here. The scenario is that we put out was that there were four bank robbers. Went out, robbed a bank, came out here to bury the money, and instead of burying the money, they decided to bury two of their accomplices. And what we need you guys to do is go out and find where those burials are. Some of the first things that they wanted to look for is any um, changes in the in the vegetation that's out here. We're using this probe to test the compactness of the soil and the surrounding areas, the soil was pretty dense, pretty hard. When we got to this spot, the probe kind of sank into the soil, which means that the area has been disturbed recently. It, it makes it a likely spot for burial. At this point, what we want to do is we want to set up our grid. Well, we grid it off so that it's easier to go in and map everything. So like, if we find something, we can coordinate exactly where it was found. This way. So this is going to be our grid north, and then our magnetic north is going to be our small M. Once they located the burials, they started to remove the leaf litter and search through that leaf litter for any evidence that um, might be associated with this crime. And then that's where they want to start their excavation. Yeah. Burials are typically very shallow and um, you don't want to drive the shovel into the ground. The dirt's very soft and hit the remains and damage them. So we're just going layer by layer, being very, very careful about it so we don't add any factors that weren't already there to begin with. Because part of our job is to look at the remains and see if there's any trauma to them. And so you don't want to confuse that with trauma that we've inflicted with the tools we use. We'll inventory everything that's there so that even after it's out of here, we'll know where it came from. So if someone were to dump a body, it's going to be put in very kind of haphazard. I mean, you might have, you know, the arms and legs going different directions. So that orientation of the body is really important when we're trying to figure out the context of how these remains were put in there. This is great training for our students because anthropologists a lot of time are asked to come out and assist with FBI, do excavations. Instead of just learning in the classroom, you know, it makes them understand it a little bit better when they're actually getting in there and doing it. 